isn't a lot of drawing to be done here. I've just mixed up some black and a little bit of blue and I'm just blocking in the trees. They're very simple and very easy to do. So just block those in and take your time. You can add a little bit of water to that as well if it makes it easier, but try to use the paint neat. What I'm doing now is I'm mixing up some of the Prussian blue with a bit of the cadmium yellow, but any yellow will do. And I'm just painting now. It's the first sort of stages. I'm blocking in colour. So the most important thing with acrylic painting or any other painting is don't try to finish your painting in the first stages. Just block your colour in. So as you can see here I'm progressing down to the middle of the painting here using a nice lovely wide brush, fully loading my brush using the yellows and the blues, really trying to mix it up a little bit so some of the greens are a bit more yellow and the others with a touch more blue so you really sort of have those different shades in the grasses. So remember you're blocking in colour, you're not painting little blades of grass. I just added some browns in there and some blues to put a little bit more darker tones in the foreground. I'm just going to take these greens right down to the bottom of the canvas and cover every inch. There's going to be some little white holes, don't worry about those, we can cover those on the next stage. Okay, I'm going to paint the sky now and I'm using some white and I'm going to touch a little bit of cobalt blue in there, but you could use ultramarine or even cerulean. And I'm painting this onto the dry surface with my half inch brush, but if you're more comfortable, you can use even a larger brush, entirely up to you. And I'm really loading it each time, making, making sure I've got plenty of paint. It's important to do this and don't overstretch the acrylic. Keep loading your brush, keep putting lots of paint on and you get that lovely glossy look that acrylics can give you. If you stretch it too much, it gets matte and it starts to break down. As you saw there, I'm adding a little bit of red, a touch of white and I'm going to paint a sort of a pinky, sort of purpley shade in the sort of middle of the sky. But if you don't want to do that, you can go straight down with the blue, just adding white to pale it towards the horizon. Horizon. But I thought I'd make my sky look a bit more interesting and put a little bit of a pinky shade in. Now I'm adding a little bit of yellow to that so it sort of fades off into the horizon. So it's yellow with white and maybe a touch of those other colours. It's sort of just a very soft neutral colour. Just paint this down to the horizon using your flat brush. Remember to keep loading it and don't worry about perfecting at this stage. Remember, we're just blocking in and we're going to do another stage on the sky. Here's a little tip for you. If it's hard to blend your acrylics, just wet your finger and just blend it while it's obviously still damp and it becomes a little bit easier. I'm just mixing up now some black, some turquoise, a little bit of yellow. I'm making a really nice dark green for the trees, but you could just use green and black if that's all you've got, it doesn't matter. And I'm just blocking in some of the trees now, you know, making this creamy consistency, adding a bit of brown, adding a bit of Prussian blue, whatever works for you, but it's just a nice dark green colour. I'm using the tip of the brush now to create some of the tops of the trees, to create a bit of texture there, and it's quite nice, it's almost like a stippling technique, and it's a lot of fun to do. I've mixed up now some of the Prussian blue and I'm just putting some different colours in there, just here and there, just to break up that dark a little. But with acrylics, we work dark to light. So I'm trying to put on all my darker colours first. Obviously my sky is lighter, but I've put the darkest tones that I could in the sky. I've used a bit of yellow with a touch of blue. It's quite a light colour now, so I'm going up a you know a lighter shade now. I'm just putting that at the top of the sky. If you look at the reference photograph, it is quite light at the top of the sky, but I'm using lots of artistic license as well. I like to interpret a photograph and not copy. I've got a very impressionistic style and I like to really paint quite loose. I'm varying my greens now. I'm using some yellow yellow with a touch of turquoise but you could do something like cerulean blue or even your Prussian blue or a primary blue but you get all these lovely different shades of green and I'm using the tip of the brush to get some texture now and lighter shades and the other thing you can do is fan out the brush as well to get like that effect of grasses 
and things like that. It's really a good way of getting lots and lots of texture. I do paint quite fast. I haven't I haven't speeded the film up. In fact, in some areas, I've actually slowed this video down. It's just to show you some of the techniques. So I'm working my way down. I'm putting some stronger tones in the foreground, some stronger greens using the different blues. So it's quite a good idea to use a variety of blues if you have them. If you don't, don't worry, use some greens as well. But I just want to vary all the colours and tones. And I'm making a very dark green here using the blue, the black and some yellow and just putting that in the foreground. Really sort of nice bigger marks because it's the nearest thing to you. You can be quite expressive. And I'm still using that flat half inch brush using the tip as well as the whole of the brush and then putting some lighter tones on top and it's kind of a bit wet in wet here and you're blending so I'm mixing up a little bit of white with the yellow now and I'm just sort of tidying up the sky a little bit around the trees you may not have to do this but when I was painting that sky I was quite loose and I'm just putting some of the sky holes now through the trees with the tip of my quarter inch brush but you could actually use a little round brush whatever you feel comfortable doing but it's to give the illusion of the light coming behind the trees now I haven't finessed this yet and I will tweak it later but I just want to block in this detail to begin with so once you've finished with your trees now is the time to paint the poppies I have dried my canvas I'm using my quarter inch brush and I'm mixing up well just plain red really cadmium red lovely you've got, I've got sort of a deeper cadmium red deep and whatever you can do if you want to haven't got a lighter red then add some yellow whatever you do don't add white to red because it will make it pink so you to make it lighter add some yellow to make it darker add some pink so don't add blue because it makes it brown. So these are all the little rules that you can do. But these are really bright red poppies. So I would just use red and maybe some touches of yellow on there and just put bigger poppies in the foreground and then just use smaller ones in the middle distance and really tiny poppies in the absolute distance right where the trees are just what I'm doing now and what also I like to do which is quite a fun thing to do I've masked out my sky I've made the paint watery and I'm spattering with my rigger brush because the paint comes off a little bit better or I use a round brush and I'm spattering some red and it's quite effective because it's tiny dots and what I'm doing now is I'm using that little rigger brush but you could use a small round brush as I say and putting tiny tiny dots in the distance little accents you don't want to overdo your poppies because there will be no green left so it'll be too much you need that contrast because the green is the complementary color to red so they really work with each other and make each other sing as it were but as you can see here now in the foreground, I've dried off my poppies and I'm putting on some lighter tones. And now I'm putting in the centres of the poppies. I'm only putting a few in and certainly in the reference photograph, there are no centres, but I'm using a bit of artistic licence. I'm adding a blue, pale, violet colour here. And you can make that just by using a bit of the cobalt blue touch of pink, touch of white. And I'm just putting a few little marks there to really contrast against the poppies. It looks quite pretty, like more wild flowers. I'm adding a few little light highlights now, just at the top of that field, just under that tree, just to really sort of create a contrast and to draw your eye into the distance. We're getting to the sort of stage towards the end of the painting where we're putting in our details. I decided to use a little sponge to create a bit of texture and another way of getting some poppies on as well. So I'm just starting off with putting some green texture on the trees. It's slightly a lighter colour and I wanted to put it at the top of the trees to create some light coming above without fiddling with my brush. But don't worry if you don't want to do this, you can do this with a brush as well. And I decided to put a little bit in the fields and now I put some red on there as well to create. And what it does, it gives you some really nice little bits of texture and it's lots of fun to do. I'm just using this little liner brush again just to put some tiny little marks, some little accents of light just on the very top of those grasses. These are my lightest lights and I keep those to the last and the smallest marks, the smallest details. I just thought I'd tidy up some of these poppies in the foreground. They were a little bit ragged looking. I think I'll leave the painting there for now. I'm quite pleased with it. 
Thank you so much for watching this demonstration. I really hope you've learned something from it or from my process, the building up from dark to light, large to small, getting those lights and details on last, waiting for things to dry, loading the brush, and just having fun and being loose. If you have any comments or questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.